Hi, thanks Janet for that kind introduction um, and thanks to Ask My Bull for energising us all for their performance. Um, I've been a regular at Poets and Players for some time so it felt really special to be recognising their competition and to be reading here today. Um, even though I realise I'm clashing quite badly with the wallpaper. So. <laughs> um, and I'm especially pleased to be here as part of the 50th anniversary celebrations for Carcanet. And in recognition of that, I'm going to start by reading a poem by one of my favourite Carcanet writers, uh, who is Jane Yeh. And I really admire Jane for the way she sort of brings together lyrical beauty with such strangeness and wit in her poems. Um, and this poem is from her second collection of three that she's published with Carcanet, and it's called This Morning, and I hope I can do it justice. This morning, the romance of the world washed over me. My heart swelled with positive feelings, not an anemia. The forklift out the window beeped, I love you, in Morse code. A curious pigeon molested my bird feeding contraption. I pined longingly for my absent biscuits which had been eaten last week. Even the unfriendly cat sensed the fragility of the moment and refrained from licking its bits. How sweet it was to breathe the sausage scented air and feel the throb of the washing machine like a second heart keeping me true. In the garden, a host of petunias dangled and waved their skinny limbs. Oh, darlings, some days are painted with high saturation pigment. Some are faint as a blueprint seen from space. Today, the bees are droning a hosanna to wish me bon journey. It's ridiculous to be so full of honey for a living. It's ridiculous how ardently the washing machine sings. Dear pigeon, I used to be a heretic from the world, then romance washed over me. I think I might believe. And in opening with Jane's poem, I realise I've set myself an impossible bar now as I move on to my own work, but I'm afraid you're just going to have to bear with me. Um, the work I'm going to share today I describe as a poetry of friendship and the imagination. Um, and I'm going to start with a poem that, that came second in this year's Poets and Plays competition. Um, the poem is after a painting um, by Whistler called Nocturne in Black and Gold and it's sort of a dark canvas with yellow gold shapes and sparks strewn across it. Um, a, a friend sent me the image by email um, and he'd spent a lot of time thinking about it and trying to understand it and I did the same and I wrote this poem in response. Night in Black and Gold after Whistler. Tonight, I leaned at the office window, a slate grey smoke choked an ash white sky. The fire at the recycling plant on Frederick Road. It drew me back to this nocturne, the night in black and gold, those clouds hurling their moods around like frustrated artists. I swear I see figures in the water reflected somehow, but it doesn't make sense, and a phoenix or a ghost ship exploding. You reckon they're fireworks, and you're probably right. We hover like this by any given masterpiece, at any tower block window, colouring the world over half pints of ale. Remember our night in the 70s club? The minutes we spent sketching tangerines. I showed you my scribbles in orange and grey, and you taught me to shade. It was cold. Still December, we necked Campari, shimmied round our bar stools to see the wonder some guy took our picture, and later, huddled at the bus stop, we burned through a couple of marble gold, scorched the black canvas. So my favourite book of all time actually happens to be a Carcanet book, and it's the New York Poets Anthology, edited by Mark Ford. Um, there it is, there we go. Um, John Ashbury is one of the New York poets um, and there's an incredible video of him reading some poems in his apartment, looking very unsure of himself at the camera and then having a pot around the city. Um, and unfortunately John Ashbury died a few years ago now, but when you watch these videos or read his work, 
I think that you can sort of feel him emitting his particular brand of loveliness from some other dimension. Um, so this, this poem's in his honour. It's called Watching John Ashbury with John Paul. Cradling his book like an egg. You watch him on TV, your love with the nose and the cable knit cardigan. Black and white is the newspaper he reads from. A boyishness lives in his eyes. Wandering through New York, he makes friends of statues, storefronts, trees especially, and the sun, which reaches through clouds to lightly pat his thinning hair always. You see his image in every portrait, which gives you a kind of wedding feel, pastel coloured, outlasting the moment. Does he love you back? Yes. Out of range, but never not loving you back. At the Pleasure Beach. I needed that day. It was a break in the rain. We rode the Big Dipper, shared a plume of candy floss, laughed about nothing and lingered on South Pier until the sky turned orange, then dark. Sometimes thoughts go round in the wash, come out while we sleep, tangled up and coloured strange. Nights by the coast, I dream of a cloud moving over the beach, your legs on the sand, finishing the crossword. I pour a few happy sad raindrops on you, and you speak at the sky, but your message is hushed by a fracas of waves, the clatter of a roller coaster creeping to its peak. And the carriage feels the pull of the drop, but for a moment it holds, <coughs> towering over the Irish sea, which seeds and settles, seeds and seeds. So this last poem I'm reading with a wink to my ball. It cuts back and forth between two characters. The you of the poem is a jazz musician, and the I of the poem is not. Um, it's a poem in which very little happens, apart from quite a lot of daydreaming. Um, so I just want to say thank you so much for listening. Um, it really has been a privilege to read today alongside Joe and Mimi, um, and I can't wait for their performances to come. Impressions. For a few quiet miles, you wave all thought to the middle distance. Saxophone case on the seat beside you. Notes of snow accent the Pennines. Always travelling in my imagination. Your charcoal overcoat, collar flipped to the wind, you scour an alley for the artist's entrance. Tenor in your left hand, Americano in your right. I water the succulents listening to your record, and the image moves through me like whiskey in the bloodstream. Sweating in your tux, some hotel bar in Singapore, an evening elapses in a blur of standards, and you pace alone round your minimalist suite, composing a melody for the skyline from the balcony. Afternoon fades, I sink into the armchair, most of the band asleep in the van. You chase the tune through fields of insomnia. Rain on the bonnet, a soft percussion for a few quiet miles. Thank you.